to do that new job. Well, when God does stuff in our life, it's the same thing. We're going to be in contact with new people, maybe going to new places, totally doing things a different way than we ever have before. Maybe even we did something similar, but you have to give up those old ways that you did it because this new, new company doesn't want you to do it that way. How many people can get that? I always like to use something in the physical realm to explain the spiritual realm. Uh, if you're not connected to the spiritual realm and receive understanding in that place and have lived and walked in that place, it makes it a lot easier for you to understand um, if I can show you an example in the physical realm. so, And I, I worked in the business world for 20-some years, and I had like four jobs in 20-some years, but every time I went to a new place, I had to learn new things. I had to give up old things. I, I drove a different way to go to work and, and did different things and met with different people. And it's the same. When a new season or time that comes on the earth, God's still going to use you. He still wants you to be a part. But you may have to give up old things, old habits, old patterns, maybe even some old friends. <clears throat> still pray for them. But the thing I've learned about this time on the earth, when we will live by revelation, which comes from the Father, the word backs up revelation, uh, totally backs up revelation. And what revelation usually is, is things he said in the word, but maybe you didn't understand it in whole, but he gives understanding through revelation. Then you actually see the word comes alive. It never takes away from the word. It doesn't negate the word. And I tell people, you need the word of God on the inside of you first. Make sure you're reading it, okay? It's never going to go away. And no spiritual encounters, and I've had thousands of them, no spiritual encounters will ever take the place of having the Word of God on the inside of you. Uh, it, it'll really sometimes alert you if you know, well, this doesn't sound quite right. Go pray about it. You know, God's doing, a, I will tell you this, He's doing a lot of new things in this time He's never done before. And the Word talks about that. You know, uh, He's going to do a new thing. Behold, it will spring forth. I think it's hilarious that the new thing is going to spring forth in the springtime. I like how uh, the Holy Spirit uses a play on the Word of God. And, uh, and when he's ready to do it, it's not going to be held back. It's just going to happen. And I do promise you this. This spring, in this springtime, you will see shocking, amazing things begin to happen in the world that have been released by God, and it will probably be his children doing them. So get ready for the new. I, I mentioned that briefly when I was here before, and then I realized I, I just have to give them the whole word. I can't give you part of it. Um, there's something in me. I'm one of 15, and uh, the caboose is sitting right there, my baby sister, and right there's my mama who had all those, that tribe of children. She gets great reward in heaven. My dad was born with a gift of faith born into a kingdom people who knew God, loved God, worked with God. And my mom was like thrown in amongst all these wild people. You know, she had a very kind of conservative father, uh, sort of a semi-Catholic background, but, but not really. And, and her mom actually let him have lots of adventures growing up. So she wasn't kind of put in a box, but thrown into this whole thing of everything you got belongs to God. So give it away because he's going to give you more and you love everybody, no matter who they are, what they look like, even if they're blasting you and cursing, you just love them anyway. And, you know, and she was thrown into that and had to live there because she loved my daddy. She, you know what? You marry people you can't live without. Do not marry people you can live with. Marry someone you can't live without. Okay, because we can't live without Jesus, right? Don't, don't settle. I'm just telling you, don't settle for second best. Hold out for the one God has for you. That's just free for somebody out there. Don't give up. They're coming. This is, he still wants me to continue. Do not give up. If you are not married and you want a spouse, don't go to eHarmony.com. And if you did that, you know, I'll forgive you. <laughs> I use eHolySpirit.com. <laughs> And I wasn't looking, and my husband was forced upon me by the Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son. And he was the one chosen for me from the beginning of time. And I'm telling you, that don't mean we're perfect. No. 
<laughs> no, no, Mr. Outside, Mrs. Inside, okay? Comfort, beautiful, wonderful things, hot, sweaty, fishing, you know, that kind of stuff. I made a, a big mistake in saying I wanted to marry a lumber. I don't know where this is going, but hey, it's fun, right, to laugh, because this is funny. I loved being inside. I had an executive job. I wanted this perfect life with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and didn't really want anyone else in my life. Certainly wasn't planning on having children because I'd help raise 12 of my siblings. And here I go and say, I want to marry someone who's like a lumberjack who could live off the land, this big, strong guy that can take care of me. And I don't want to live off the land. I certainly don't want to be outside <laughs> and don't want to get dirty or sweat. And guess what he gave me? There he is right there. Captain Bing, the fisherman. <laughs> and uh, so you know what, though? We've been married 37 years. In today's world, that's a lifetime. <laughs> and I love him. I still can't live without him. Okay. Love can last. It's a journey. Trust me, isn't it? Anyone who's married, it's a journey. <laughs> You learn to love, you learn to die a lot. And I will tell you this, for those who don't understand, the more you die to yourself, the happier you will be, the freer you will be. You lay down your life and find it in Christ. And then you can love everybody. <laughs> that was, Somebody needed to hear that. Don't give up. This is the best time to get married and have kids. The enemy doesn't want that to happen. He is terrified. Some of the greatest leaders in the body of Christ are being born right now. And I've known that for about 10 years. Some of the greatest leaders, if you've got children, grandchildren, they're probably in that category. It's going to be powerful, 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 powerful people in this world. And we have generations left on Excuse me, generations, I need my water. Generations left on this earth, this is just free to throw in there so you know. I'm not talking about this alignment thing is not for like the next 10 or 20 years. It's for probably several hundreds of years. And you may sit there and be shocked. I, I do personally know the Father, have been to heaven so many times I lost count. I have his heart, I have his thoughts, I have his ways. I, I died a long time ago. He trusts me with his words with his power, but most of all with you. And I wouldn't be standing here sharing revelation if I wasn't in that place and chose to be in that place. We have much, much, much time left on this earth. We're living in the kingdom age. It's only the springtime of the kingdom age where the manifested sons and daughters will manifest powerful, shocking, stunning things around this world. We will literally take back the atmosphere from the enemy. Much of the earth will be healed itself because of the light of God in us. His light heals. Okay, you walking in power and authority and glory, it heals. There'll be whole realms. He was showing me today. He took me and showed me realms and regions being taken by the manifested sons and daughters and the dread champions. Doesn't that sound awesome? A dread champion, yeah, hell will dread them. They will dread them. Do you know that, that Jesus, remember he tormented the demons? How many people remember? Let me see your hands. The demons said, if you come to torment us before our time, those demons weren't talking about being thrown in the lake of fire. They were talking about these days. When the body of Christ, the believers would stand up, know who they are, use their authority and strip away the power of the enemy to operate and push back darkness out of whole regions, and if the demons tried to come in those regions, they would be tormented by the glory. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, if you think he was going to take us out of here before he got a chance to do that in this earth, no, this world's going to know there is a God, and he is your daddy. And when you got born again, you became a whole different creation. That's what the word says. You were no longer just a human being. You were a supernatural being connected to heaven. Your DNA changed. The Father changed the DNA on the inside of you, gave you stones of fire from his heart. The Holy Spirit moved in 
and you became his temple when you asked him to. Uh, he's a layered being. He sends layers of himself everywhere. Guess what? Your soul has layers in it. God uses those layers, and you're going to learn, learn that one day real soon. They'll travel to the spirit realm. It's already happening. You're seated in heavenly places because the layer of your soul sitting there right now it looks just like you. How many people like Revelation? I'm sure some of you are probably getting shocked and amazed. That's what happens when Revelation comes into you. I've seen the beginning of time. That means before the earth was made. And uh, it's amazing what you learn when you're caught up to heaven. What all of your loved ones who live there already know. Uh, stuff way beyond you ever dreamed or thought of. They're not just up there sitting on a cloud. They, they received layers of revelation as they were approaching heaven. Then they get flooded revelation. They get shown your life on the earth, what God wants to do with you. They're very excited for you right now that you're alive right now here. They know the mighty acts that you're going to do. You know there's a scroll with your whole life written on it in heaven. God's opening those scrolls and revealing to some people what their life is. I'm not laughing because I think it's funny. I just love God when he gives understanding of himself. This is what he showed me today. If you take all of the known universe, every being, spiritual, physical, uh, creature, whatever there was, ever, anywhere, from all of time, he could stick it in a little tiny capsule and hold it in the palm of his hand. That's your daddy. You came from him. He sent you here to rule and reign, not just to make it by. There'll be a time on this earth where there won't be sick believers. Because we will be in health because our soul is prospering. Isn't this exciting news? It's a whole lot better than doom and gloom, isn't it? He does not want you to fear. There's no fear in heaven. On earth. As it is in heaven, there is no fear. It does not exist in heaven. Fear should not exist in us. It doesn't exist in me. I put my clothes on just like everybody here. But I chose, like he said, you make a choice. Are you going to run after what God wants? Or do you want to stay in your same place you've always been in? Because God right now is aligning us, number one, with who he is who you are, but especially what time it is. According to his timeline, not man's calendar. And I always laugh and say, thank God we don't follow the Mayans' calendar because we would have all been gone. According to them, but you know, the enemy doesn't have full understanding and knowledge. And he created that whole thing, you know. Uh, he doesn't know everything. He thinks he does. But I'm telling you, the, the thing that's coming on the earth right now is uh, there's about a lot of torment to start happening in the kingdom of darkness. And the one thing I do not want you to be concerned about is the ISIS crisis. Okay? I want you to know that as a born-again believer, you have, say it, power over all the power of the enemy. Do you think that means you have power over the demonic controlling the ISIS people? Then why are we not taking that authority? Because people think they have to deal in the flesh all the time. But our authority, our rulership is in the spirit. What does he say? Your weapons are not carnal, they are not physical, correct? That means they're spiritual. It says they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You have that on the inside of you. If you're a believer, and literally this is what I do, I stand in my home and I say, I, as a right, as a believer, as your daughter, as your manifested daughter, I take authority over all the enemy and the demonic operating in the ISIS in our city, in our country, and I strip away the power that they're using over the human beings to do those horrible crimes. And I released the army of heaven who was sent here on our behalf to go and pull down the strongholds of the demonic because I just said they have no power. And all of heaven begins to roar with laughter when I do that. And the army of heaven goes and starts stripping away the strongholds that have been built over that group. 
So I, I'm going to actually uh, challenge you. The next time you hear something on the news about it, stand up and say, no, I won't receive fear of them because I'm a believer. I strip away the power of the enemy operating in that group and say you no longer have the right to operate to come against us. And then release the host of heaven. The Bible says they're sent here on our behalf. By the way, what do you think they're doing? There's no war in heaven. What is the host doing? The armies of heaven that are without number. They're sent here for us. Amen? And they've been waiting for this time on the earth when we finally would realize we work together. That is not worshiping angels, by the way. Your guardian angels have been with you since, since you were conceived. They have been sent from heaven for you on your behalf. And then the army has been released all over this world right now. Millions of them since 2012 are covering the atmosphere of this earth, waiting for us to say the right words. And that is not, oh, I'm so afraid. So I really believe what God said in his word. I really believe we have authority and power over the enemy. Amen? So now I'm going to share about alignment. That was just a, the commercial. The Holy Spirit just had to get that out. <laughs> how, how many people, this is the first time you heard any of this. Can I see your hands, anybody? So a lot of you have already heard a lot. of. If you, well, you know what? God bless you. Download revelation into him. You need to ask for revelation, by the way. It's okay to ask for it. God wants to give. In this time on the earth, revelation is going to be downloaded like rain all over the earth. And if you are willing to receive it, you have not because you ask not. Those are big words with God. And by the way, when you say, right now I've heard the Holy Spirit say, all your step in, step in, step in. Do you know what that means when you say, I step in? That means you are willing to be a part of what he wants to do. That is your way of saying, I receive it and I want to be a part. And I've had my whole staff and, and my family literally stand there and say, okay, we are in agreement with what you want right now. We are in agreement to let you align us so we take a step and step into your will for this time on earth. When you do that, your name is written down in books in heaven. You aren't just saying words. All of heaven is watching you do that. God wants that to happen. The Father wants that to happen. Number one, you're recognizing he's actually doing something new. Number two, you want to be a part. You may not even fully understand what that is. But I don't know where in the word where he ever actually gave a lot of detailed information. As you walked in it, you got more, correct? Well, you're blessed because you're living in a day when he is giving detailed information. And we should be excited about that. I've, I've known the Lord from the age of four and I'm 62. And I can tell you I've been through a lot of moves of God, seen a lot, but nothing like what I have heard, felt, and seen in the last two years in the spirit or in heaven. All of heaven is preparing for what's going to happen on this earth. It'll go viral all over the internet. In one night, your whole life can change. In one night, this earth will be so impacted by signs and wonders from God. It's going to shock and stun people, and they're going to be shaken. This world is going to be shaken. It even says in Haggai that once again, he will shake the heavens and the earth. Why? Because something's going to happen. He's going to do something. You need to read the rest of that scripture. Go read Haggai 6.2. The Holy Spirit corrected me. So right now, this is the word he gave me for 2015. It's God's priority list. And usually it's only got a couple things on it because he doesn't want to overwhelm you with a lot of instruction. You know, we, he talks to us like we're children. And the more you know him, the more childlike you will become. And let me throw this in for free. You cannot leave fun out of this time on the earth. This is a serious time for heaven, and it's important. This is what he said. This is an important time for heaven to work with us on the earth, but it will be the most fun you've ever had in your life. And there's a real, real um, reason why that's true. Because it says on earth as it is in heaven, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, and half of heaven is fun. So if we're going to live a heaven culture, by the way, that's what that scripture means. If we're going to live a heaven culture... Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's saying bring heaven culture to the earth. Say amen. amen. 
Heaven culture is a whole lot better than any culture we have on this earth. You will live heaven culture. That means you'll create and invent new things. When you speak, life will flow from you. There will be no fear in you, no sickness in you. There'll be so much boldness in you, faith will explode on the inside of you. When you speak, things will happen. We are a whole new type or group of people, believers, living on the earth. I don't care if you're 70 and you've been here 70 years, you're new now. The other word I hear all the time from the Holy Spirit is now. Because he's not talking about five years from now. He means now. This is a now time. The first one on the list. <laughs> Loose and leave all of the old. Because remember, this is a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Well, if it's new, that means you're going to have to get rid of some old stuff. Amen. We're really, we're literally getting stuff out of our house. <laughs> things. We're giving away stuff, getting rid of stuff. He's going to give us new stuff. You're going to get new things. So loose, literally loose, old ways, old habits, especially if he's been asking you to give it up. <laughs> this is the time you need to really be serious about, this is the serious part, be serious about getting rid of the old. You can declare and decree that, but then you actually have to start doing it. Amen? Give up old ways, old habits, old patterns, old words, and adapt to heaven culture, what I was just sharing. People go, what is heaven culture? Just about the opposite of what we've been all living down here. Okay? No, none of the enemy involved in our life anywhere. New things coming into the earth. We are creating the new things. We're speaking new things because we're going to speak life, not, not hate. Amen? And truth. There's a difference in loving somebody. You love them so much, you just accept them the way they are. But if you don't share truth with them, you're not really loving them. I have news for everybody out there. I think you can just love everybody and just let them live their life. You're hurting them, not helping them. Because if you really love them like Jesus Christ, he shared truth. He let people choose, but he shared truth, okay? I'm talking about people who sin. Some people don't want to talk about sin. Well, God doesn't like sin because, you know why? It lets the enemy mess with you. It just lets him mess with you. I'm not saying anybody's here sinning. Saying if you know people, you need to share truth. You know, you need to be free because God wants to empower you. He wants to use you. And yes, you can step in just the way you are right now and run after him. The closer you get to him, things just fall off of you. The more in love you become with him, none of the other stuff is even important. And there are people doing that. They're running after him. They want more of God. You just stand in your house somewhere and say that and see what happens. Do it every night at the same time. I promise you, he's going to show up. I'm not about God. If his presence floods your home to you were on the floor and can't get up, you ask for it. You aren't going to care about nothing, all those little lists of things that were so important to you or, or things that happened that bothered you or you wanted questions answered. You won't care about any of that stuff. You are so consumed with him. Every word that comes out of you is about God. It's about life. It's about love. It's about truth. See, because in heaven, that's how they live. They live filled with him. They live with him all the time. But you know what? He's as close as the air you breathe. So old ways, old habits, old patterns, old words, adapt to heaven culture. Do not revert back to the old or you will fall behind. That's what Sean was trying to say. You can embrace it and run after it and choose it or, hmm. <laughs> There'll be a lot of people watching to see what God is doing and see it happen. But, um, you know, not everybody's going to run after it. But remember the scripture that says that, for those who, if, you, if you're going forth, if you're plowing and you're going forth and you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. How many people know that scripture? Let me see your hand. There's a scripture that talks about that. That doesn't mean he doesn't want you in heaven. That doesn't mean he won't love you anymore. That means if you start walking forward in, in this new way, in these new patterns that God will give you to do, like taking authority is one of the number ones on the list, taking authority over any, any, any of the enemy or darkness, you do, you, you can live a life and not have to tolerate darkness. You do not have to tolerate anything of the enemy in your life, in your home, on, in your neighborhood. We tolerate stuff. Say amen. Don't tolerate things anymore. 
Don't, don't tolerate anything in them. If you don't like it, sick the host of heaven on them. I'm serious. <laughs> they get real excited when you do that. Release them into their assignment from the Father to protect us, to cover us, and tell them to run any of the enemy out of your neighborhood because you're not going to tolerate darkness around your life anymore. You begin to change the atmosphere in your home and in your neighborhood when you do that. See, that is your right. How many people believe that? Let me see your hands. How many people think you have the right to not have to live around darkness? Now, I'm not saying you have necessarily can make people give up their demons if they want them, but you start living, <laughs> living in the power of God, they will leave because they don't want to be around you. There's, there's leaders in the past, Smith Wigglesworth, Maria Wentworth, whatever, they would come within like 50 miles of a place and every demon would run. They literally would run out of the people. People would be healed and set free because they couldn't bear to be about the, be near the glory that those people were carrying. It's going to be multiplied in the earth because they no longer tolerated anything about the enemy around them. I hope somebody's grabbing this stuff. I'm still only in number one. So don't revert back. That doesn't mean, you know, in the beginning when you start to, you can give up some old ways and habits and patterns. Ask the Holy Spirit to remind you or show you. Um, but I'm sure you could probably sit there and make a short list yourself. We all did that. Number two, choose with your will to step into the new. Like I said before, when you do that, you're literally surrendering to God and saying, I'm stepping in to what you want. It's just a prophetic act of you saying, yes, I want it. Amen? Surrender to, this is the Father speaking, surrender to my will, my way, and you will not be shaken. How many people don't want to be shaken? If you do not align with my will and you have given me permission, then I will shake you until you are aligned. Hmm. That's what he said. He didn't want to be shaken. Do not awaken tomorrow after this night of hearing these words. Do not awaken tomorrow thinking it is all the same and I will do the same things, live the same way. Amen? God is serious. Your words mean something in heaven. God created with words. The word himself would take God's words and make things. Your words are powerful. That's one of the ways, the number one way we will rule and reign with Christ is through our words. So if you, if you mean something and you say it, God will expect you to follow through with that. Like I said, it gets very exciting. <laughs> Get out of fleshly thinking. Remember what I said before? Don't think everything is in the flesh and begin to live from a spiritual viewpoint. The more you believe it is real, this is, this is such a truth in the spirit realm. The more you believe it is real, the more real it becomes. You should write that down. The more you believe it is real, the spirit realm, the supernatural, the host of heaven working with us, the Father having specific plans for his children this day on the earth, the more you believe it is real, you know how you do that? By talking about it. You talk about it. You share it. You need to make plans with God. Get a book and start writing things down that he has to say to you about this time. That's really, that's one way you can extend your faith. But the more you believe it is real... That's how you show the more real it becomes. I started talking about the host of heaven all the time. I've talked about them for years. They started showing up outside my home. And people could see them. And then my family could see them. People driving down the street could see them. When I travel places, people could see them over the buildings. You know, I, I actually acknowledged I wasn't sitting down having tea with them. I wasn't worshiping them. I want to tell you where that whole thing about worshiping angels came from real quick. It started way back when those angels who fell and went beyond their bounds and created the offspring in the land. How many people know about that? Remember, they created the Nephilim, which I'm tired of hearing about. <laughs> they created the Nephilim and they went beyond the bounds. They went beyond the bounds of saying, well, I'm going to marry them anyway. I know you said not to mix with the human beings, but I'm going to. Those angels all had flesh on their bodies, by the way. That's a revelation and a mystery. There's a whole tribe of angels in heaven that have flesh on their body. He needed them for something. And some of them fell, some did not fall. And what they went from just because once they stepped beyond the bound, God had a contract with them. I'm sending you to the earth to help educate mankind. There were no cavemen crawling around in caves trying to figure it out. They just weren't. 
Amen. And so they were sent to the earth to help educate mankind. And he said, you cannot mix with them or you'll step beyond the bounds I'm sending you for. And when they did that, they fell. Can you imagine canceling a contract with God who made them? But they did. And they went from just doing that to becoming gods. And they were literally worshipped by the Egyptians, the Mayans, and the Aztecs. That's why those civilizations were so great. In the earth, I'm just giving you some free revelation right now that was shown to me. It actually answers questions people have. Melchizedek is a, probably the leader of that tribe of angels. But he's, of course, he's God's personal high priest, by the way. And Abraham couldn't have seen him and touched him and paid tithes to him. But he had no father, no mother, no beginning, nor end. No human hands served at the altars that Melchizedek was a part of. Say amen. See, when you get connected with God, he will share revelation with you that will so explode the word of God and give uh, answers to mysteries in the word of God. And those angels still chose to step out and they figured, well, we'll just marry them and have offspring and it'll be great. But because they, they went and went against what God wanted, they became gods. And so people in those different groups worshipped them and adored them. And they, they got those people to do human sacrifices because they fell under the covering of those fallen angels. And that whole thing, you can't talk to angels, by the way, came from that happening. And yet, all over in the Word of God, angels came to people, brought them messages, uh, had discussions with them. And so I'm just sharing this with you because you are more and more going to see them in this world everywhere. You're going to see angels. And sometimes you might see the other side. And so I'm just letting you know, uh, if you go home and sit down and your angel, your eyes are open and you see them sitting next to you, just say hi. You don't have to have tea with them. They wouldn't let you worship them anyway. Trust me, your angels would not allow you. Remember how many times in the Bible they said, don't bow down to me. Do not bow down to me. Trust me, if they belong to God, they're not going to tell you to worship them. But there will be peoples whose homes, this is all about the time we're living in, that they will be stop stations for the host of heaven to come past through on their way into the earth to do assignments. I'm just letting you know, if you see them, don't let just fear come on you. Ask them if the Spirit of God has sent them. They can't lie if you ask them that, by the way. It's scriptural. People say, no one can see angels. Well, then that's all over in the Word. Amen. The world become more and more spiritual. So this is why he wants you to step into the new. And that says, get out of fleshly thinking. Live from a spiritual viewpoint. The more you believe it is real, the more real it becomes. See beyond your nose. This is what the Father actually says. See beyond your nose, begin to connect with heaven. Apply each revelation he gives you to your life every day. Because it's going to help you to manifest for him. Begin to see yourself operating and living in the supernatural realm. Because this is what he's called us to do today in the earth. Amen? You can't be a manifested son and daughter and think you're going to live the same as everybody else. You're not going to look the same. You may still be you, but you'll be filled with the glory. At one point, your face will probably shine. It says you'll be shine. Even the night will be light around you. I'm just letting you know things that have been shown happening in the future. At a funeral, raising someone from the dead that was cremated. We will do greater works than he did. Say amen. Stopping earthquakes, then make it put it back the way it was before it came. Say amen. amen. These are the, some of the signs and wonders that are going to shock this world. People say, I receive it. If you hear something God's saying to his children, this is what he said. It has always been my plan to demonstrate and manifest through those who choose to be chosen. You know why he said that many are called, but few are chosen? Because you choose to be chosen. Say amen. A lot of people have been called, but they didn't want to pay a price or have to step out and do something. This is number three. This is only the third one. Be a part of the team. God is using the body of Christ as a team. Those in the body who are willing to receive and act through revelation. Honor, pray, help one another. That means regardless of denominations. Amen. Heaven culture. There's no denominations in heaven. 
We're a family. Say we're a family. And it's going to get, we're going to get closer and closer. Those who begin to teach revelation in their churches are going to be flooded with people because it brings life. It, it just brings so much more into your life when you have understanding. So remember, it says, treat each other as I would. This is the father because the world will be watching you. Oh, they will be watching you when we start demonstrating. And it won't even be up to the news media to broadcast it. Aren't you glad we have the internet? God designed that for this time in the world so that these things could go viral. Never forget, revelation always rules over calculation. Calculation is what your natural mind would tell you, even when it does not compute with the natural mind. Because I know the Father, and he'll always ask you to do things that don't make any sense. No matter where I send you, you will always be a representative of heaven. And fellowship with those who are filled with revelation and preparing to live in this new time. The kingdom age, you will encourage one another. These are his promises to you because God always gives promises. When a new time comes and he's asking new things of us, he always gives promises. These are the promises if you will step out. My promises to you, you will be the face of heaven. You will be our champions. You will shake things. You will be sought out. You will be rich. Because in this season, this time on the earth, this one is going to transfer the wealth of the wicked and have many people become entrepreneurs. I love this one. You will be dangerous. You will not be dangerous to people. You will be dangerous to hell. How many people want to be dangerous to hell? They don't mind wrecking and ruining your life. They've been doing it for thousands of years. You will, this is what he said. I love this one. You will live until I take you. And in, these, in the past time, remember this is a whole new time on the earth. I know there were people who were just mart martyred. I understand that. There will always be some martyrs in the earth. But when we start taking authority like we're supposed to and meant to, there will be whole regions filled with the glory and this is what the father said the gates of hell can't prevail or will never win against those regions of glory and people will drive their dead relatives into the regions of glory and they will come back to life say on earth as it is in heaven they live and walk and are saturated with the glory and the life of God in heaven when we begin to run after what he wants for this time on the earth and that, that's called aligning. You ha How many people see you have to align? Really, number one, you have to choose. I want to align with what he wants. And that first step is to step. Isn't that lovely? Step in and say, I want this. And mean it, really mean it. And then don't just say it once, okay? Just say, Father, remember, I have stepped in. I want to know you. I want to feel your presence. I want to be consumed with your love. I want to love. I want to give truth to these people. I want revelation. I want to make a difference in this time on the earth because you timed my birth on the earth for this time. That's why you're alive now. Amen. And this is his last thing. And I know he mentioned obedience. And I can tell you, more than ever before, this is the time to obey what God is saying. Amen. I have to do every one of these things myself. I do it like it's breathing. It can become like your breath. That, that's how much of you it will become if you want it. I love you. We'll live until I take you. And I know he's actually going to expand people's lifetimes in this time on the earth. Say amen. He's going to start doing it. And the last one is this. Obey. And it will all be okay. If you obey, it will all be okay. And let me tell you, he is so for you. He is not against this. I'm just going to leave this here with, with Sean. I'll probably end up by posting it on Facebook and YouTube, probably. This is the first time I've actually got to talk about it. And this is major stuff the body of Christ needs to know. This is, this is the Father's plans, not man's, not the government's, and certainly not the enemy's. Amen? The Father does not, is not the bearer of doom and gloom right now. It's, it's him wanting to use us. And God's always used. 
He himself was the first one to strike out against the darkness, and he always uses the light. He used the lightning power to kick Satan, uh, Lucifer, out of heaven. The third day in hell, he used the fire on the inside of his son to wipe out hell and all the hierarchy of hell and made a show of it openly. Yes, get ready for the show. Let's add that line. The Holy Spirit said, add that line. Get ready for the show. If you think the Holy Spirit doesn't like a show, he is Mr. Showman, I can tell you. They call him the drama king in heaven. So let's stand up. For just a minute, I'm just going to have you do a couple prophetic acts, and then I'm going to give the microphone back to Sean. And really, this is the first time I've spoken in probably months. Uh, he's really kept me to himself for months and canceled all of my calendars. People think I'm not going to travel anymore. And let me tell you, when you say you do what you want to, he will do it. And he wiped out whole tours I had planned. Because <laughs> you know what? We tried doing it the old way. In the new time, I will still travel and speak, but it's going to be up to him. But I'm telling you, wherever I go, I'm going to make sure the body of Christ knows how to shake this world, take authority in their life. And uh, the enemy is going to have a lot of hard days ahead of him. Say, Father, I choose to receive revelation. I love the new time. I want new ways. I want your thoughts. I want your heart. So I choose with my will. Everybody take a step forward. I choose with my will to step in to this new time. And I receive a shift into your timeline and off of man's timeline. Away from man's plans. I receive your plans. I'm going to stay excited. And I expect your presence to consume my home and my very thoughts. I surrender my will to your will. I want your will in heaven. Just like in heaven, in my life, in this earth, right now. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father, I thank you right now for blessing your children, God. I just release your life into them, Father, your love into them, Father. I thank you, God, for consuming them and their children and their children's children's children to the next thousand generations coming on this earth so long as you choose for us to remain. I thank you, Father, their mind is going to have a change, a mindset change, God, a spirit set change to let them live from the inside out. Let their spirit man rule over their flesh. Flesh. Let fear leave their home. I let lack leave their home, God. I thank you for giving them witty ideas and inventions. I thank you for hope and life coming from them everywhere they go, God. Put words in their mouth. Put your ways in their hearts, God. Because we have been set aside for this time on the earth to show this world there is a God and He loves them. Amen? And say, Father, while we're at it. Say it. Father, Father while we're at it. We're just going to take a prophetic act. And we speak to any darkness ruling in our neighborhood. We strip away your right and your power to operate there. Get out in Jesus' name. Because I will no longer tolerate darkness anywhere around me. Amen.